The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 578 Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yapchan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She's a travel writer, a host, and an actress, and I'm really excited to have her on and share her story with us today on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Rachel Grant. Rachel, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more by yourself to the listeners. Oh, yes. Hi. Nice to meet you, Sheena, on your podcast. Yes. Yeah, so uh, my name is Rachel Grant. I'm British. I was born in the Philippines. My mother is a Filipina. I'm an actress, TV host, travel writer. I've produced award-winning digital content, and I'm also a social entrepreneur. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Rachel, what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? I, I would. I have a quote. It's uh, Every time I thought I was being rejected from something good, I was being redirected to something better. And that's a good quote because I've, I've had a lot of rejection in my life and in my profession. And a quote on something about rejection is quite important to me. Thanks for sharing that. And I think that's a great quote, especially like you mentioned, you know, dealing with rejection is not always fun. And especially as women, as Asian women, like, you know, we're very, like when we get rejected the first time, it's like the end of the world. It's not realizing like, you know, when one door closes, another one opens and we never know where that, you know, other door can lead us to. So I really love that quote that you mentioned. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? For me, it's being unaffected by what other people say and what they think about you. And that also goes for the good as well as the not so good. You know, compliments are great and they're fine, but I've learned not to feed off them so much because you need to be confident without that. You know, compliments can also cause resentment in others too if they hear it. So listen to everything, but don't let it affect you. Thanks for sharing that great definition. And Rachel, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? A little bit interesting because I was raised in Nottingham in England. I am, I'm the middle of uh, three sisters, so I've got two sisters either side of me, and grew up in a very Asian household, Filipino mother. My mother and father divorced when I was quite young, and so we had a, a, a Filipino um, nanny who stayed with us, and she still lives with my mother. So all our food and everything was very Filipino and Asian, and culturally it was a very Filipino household living in Britain, in Nottingham. So I had a lot of confidence, I suppose, as a child. We, um, we would go on stage and we would perform, always complimented. We always won a lot of awards. My mother's house is filled with awards and trophies and medals from all sorts of academic awards to um, performing awards. So when I was thrown out into the big bad world of uh, my profession as an actress and as a performer, and this was in my late teens, it was really the first time I was getting harsh criticism and being knocked. So what this does for someone and their self-esteem at that age is uh, it's very confusing. So at, at times, I do remember losing a lot of confidence. I was picked at on the way I look, on my shape and size, whether I was good enough for this role or whether I could speak a certain way, whether there was enough space around my eyelids, like I'm being serious, to be like to, to be photographed for something, whether it was for makeup or, or something. Every little bit about me was picked and the the color of my hair, how long my fingers were. And this went on for years and it it still goes on, but I'm used to it. And that really knocks my confidence here and there. And it's very hard in my profession, obviously, you have to kind of hide all that and be very confident. And then I also lost confidence and faith in my industry because I experienced more than one, so to speak, hashtag me too moments. And earlier this year, I shared a horrific Me Too moment that happened with me. I shared it with the BBC. Uh, so the story's out there. And it took, me, it took me 17 years before I could share that story. And because so many women were sharing their own stories, it gave me the confidence to share mine. So before I discovered self-confidence, yes, it, it, was, it was hard because I, it was me that was having to bring myself up from the rejection, from the knockbacks from expecting whatever, sexual favors for a certain job. I mean, we shouldn't be experiencing this, but in a nutshell, that's how it was for me, yes. 
Thanks for sharing that. And yeah, I mean, you know, being thrown out in the world for the first time, especially in an industry like where you're in, it, it does get really tough and you have to build that thick skin. And like you mentioned, you know, doing, you know, sexual favors to to kind of get the job is yeah like it's something we shouldn't have to do i mean it should be based on you know our talents and you know what we're capable of and it's it's crazy we still live in a world like that but it's great that there are women out there who are vulnerable enough to share their story and realize you know you're not the only one experiencing this and you know there's other women who've been there and understand that you know you don't have to go through that and you know just kind of warn other women that you're you're worth more than you realize and what was that point in your life when you realize your worth that you can go out there and you know be who you are be your true self have that confidence what was that aha moment if I were to really pick one I do remember a time where I spent three months in the Philippines where I dedicated myself to needy communities my family we run a charity so my mother it's a British registered charity my mother lives in um, England still and we raise money for underprivileged communities in the Philippines so there was a period where I took some time out. It was more or less to spend time with my grandparents in the Philippines who, who have now passed away in, in the last couple of years. So I, at the same time, I wanted to like give myself to these needy communities and our projects. So I was helping others. And it was the first time I realized, I noticed how, to, well, how can I say this? So I was helping others and I, I realized I gained a tremendous amount of self-esteem. And I noticed it was because, this is what I think, I took the focus away from myself and I focused on others for a long period of time. And I think this gave me more confidence and it also gave me a different sense of achievement. The achievement wasn't, the focus wasn't on me. And I, I'm in a profession where you're so focused on yourself, as I was saying. So, and I also was around people who led much simpler lives. You know, I live in a profession and where it's quite glamorous and, you know, it's, I'm being chauffeured to places and there's like red carpet, glamorous nights out. So I was away from that. And I was with people who led much simpler lives, people who didn't judge me. And I was around people who appreciated little things and all this just makes you realize how everything really is just so perfect and how we have everything we need and how we are, how we are our true selves. You know, we are fine exactly how we are because we live in a society where we feel we need to reach certain goals and make X amount of money at this certain age or do this and do that. But we're all unique and we should be all free to be ourselves and to be successful at our own pace and in our own way. So I really feel volunteering and getting involved in charity work or to attach yourself to a great cause is a great way to ground us and it gives us purpose. It takes the focus away from yourself, from ourselves. We meet new people, we learn new skills. It's fun, it's filled with great vibes and great energy and it just throws everything into perspective. So for me, that might have been my aha moment. Thanks for sharing that. I think that's a great story. Yeah, you know, sometimes when you like when you go to the Philippines, you know, you get a culture shock because it's like, you know, these people, you know, they live the way they are, but yet they're so happy. And, you know, when we live in in places like Canada or the UK or the States, it's like we take every little thing for granted, not realizing we're so much more blessed than we realize. And um, like you, you mentioned, you know, focusing on others versus, you know, focusing yourself. Yeah, having that greater purpose. It's just like there's something out there that's bigger than you and you're just willing to go out there and do it because you know that you're creating that positive change for other people. And, you know, because of these realizations, what's your life been like now? Well, after um, I was in the aftermath of Typhoon Haiyan, I, I flew to Tacloban about a week later after after Typhoon Haiyan. And when you see a place that has been so devastated, where you see a ten-year-old boy that had to bury his entire family with the help of the local priests who lost most of his parish and practically half the church. And you see bodies around that are still being picked up from the beach and being washed up on the shore and people have lost everything. And they still have their faith and they're still able to go on. That makes me feel I have not a worry in the world. So after that discovery, it made me realize I don't have a worry in the world because I have everything I need. Yeah, if someone can go, go on and live having lost absolutely everything and everything around them, that makes me realize I don't have a worry in the world. Thanks for sharing that. And yeah, it makes a huge like 
realization and see things in a different perspective, especially when we live in a world where we're constantly um, bombarded with like, you know, you have to have the latest gadgets, you have to have the latest, you know, fashion trend and all this, like these material things, not realizing there's people out there who have nothing and still are happier than most people who have everything. Your things shouldn't define you. They shouldn't give you, having all these things shouldn't be the thing that gives you confidence. You should be able to live without it. Really? Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, you know, they always say that people who have more life experiences versus more material things are so much happier because they just, you know, let go of those things and it doesn't define them. So I really love that you mentioned that. And, you know, uh, Rachel, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey to self-confidence. What would be that one tip you would give to her? Okay, so I love to travel and I would definitely suggest traveling more and experience, experiencing more Uh, different cultures, different foods, stepping out of one's comfort zone. Now, I don't know if you know about about, about this about me, Sheena. So I have over 100 million views in like packing videos, videos where I I show people how to pack small, pack pack like 100 items into a carry-on. I really believe in when you travel to leave everything behind, to not check a bag in, but to carry a carry-on or an under seat bag because the less we leave behind of ourselves the more we can experience so that's one little tip I also want women to embrace rejection and to use it use it to help you propel and go forward there was a time in my late teens and early 20s I kept every single rejection letter I ever got and this was a time before we were sending out photos and emails to people uh, applying for jobs and auditions it would be we would stick a photo and our, our resume into an envelope and send it off to the casting director or agent so we'd get the letter back and I have dozens of these letters that I kept and I still have them at my mother's home so I would embrace rejection because the re- and sorry I didn't say the reason why I kept these letters is I use these letters to um, I'd go back and read them to push me forward that's what I do I'd also recommend volunteering regularly attaching yourself to a good cause or something similar that you're really passionate about also avoid being around people who bring you down or who bring others down you know surround yourself with good vibes and loving caring types now if you have no choice but to be around negative people who bring others down or bring you down make a point to say something positive bring them up bring up their energy and those around you embrace growing older this is very important I think life is really a wonderful journey and getting older is always not in our society and particularly in my profession particularly for women you know it's so the focus is on how we look so much but we shouldn't we should grow more confident as we age we are more experienced we're more knowledgeable and we're more connected we should never stop learning i really feel we should grow more confident the older we get and i have more confidence now than i ever did and i take it down to all those experiences I've, I've had of turning rejection into something positive and making making it stronger pushing me in another direction so I'm so I'm getting better and getting it right helping others and taking the focus less off oneself for um for times yes thanks for sharing those great tips and if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with so on all my social media whether it's twitter facebook or instagram I'm under Miss Rachel Grant, M I W S R A C H E L G R A N T, Miss Rachel Grant. I have a website, rachelgrant.com, but it seems to be more on uh, social media where people tend to connect and see more um, what I'm doing. I, I tend not to update my website so much, but my social media pages are obviously updated regularly. Thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Rachel, we, you can also head on over to the TaoSelfConfidence.com and search for Rachel's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I'm really just grateful for Rachel today for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Rachel. All right. Thank you, Sheena. Thanks again. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of another amazing woman's journey to self-confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Get your free audiobook by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.